friends, let me welcome you once again to another Straight Talk program. We have been running this program for almost two months now, and the responses from viewers have been very positive. Many have been viewing our programs and have been commenting on them, and that encourages us to continue with the program. Being mainly educational, to inform as many Guyanese as possible in Guyana as well as overseas in respect to developments nationally and internationally. This morning our program will be dedicated to an issue that has suddenly arisen in our country. A large debate is taking place in sections of the media on a matter which it is quite obvious the government has a hand in. The hand, however, still remains hidden, still remains covered, because the nation is not informed. The government is not being as transparent as they ought to be in respect to informing the Guyanese people, that is to say, providing full disclosure on this matter. The matter I'm referring to is the sudden arrival or arrivals of thousands of Haitians in our country, amounted to almost 8,000 Haitians over the past month or so. This does not mean to say that other foreign nationals have not been arriving in large numbers information, or I should say data, has been published to that effect. So why is it that the Haitian arrivals has attracted so much attention as distinct, let's say, from Americans who have been arriving in large numbers also, Trinidadians, and other nationals from CARICOM? The reason for this is what is being debated in the public domain. Everyone knows that we are now on the cusp of an election. Debates are also taking place simultaneously on the question of the national registration exercise that GCOM has embarked upon and which the court has ruled on. In addition to that, or I should say, parallel with the debate on the legality slash illegality of the national registration exercise is the debate on the Haitian arrivals factor. Now, first and foremost, the question of the national registration, whether it's legal or illegal, has been dealt with by the Chief Justice. And as we all know, the Chief Justice has ruled that GCOM is free to conduct a national registration or house to house registration at any point in time. That is within their remit. The problem with this exercise at this time is the context in which it is being conducted. That is to say, the context in which a no confidence motion has been passed and has been validated by the court, primarily the Caribbean Court of Justice. Guyanese, as far as I could understand them, being one as well, and members of the public who've been writing letters to the press and commenting on social media, have absolutely no problem with Haitians arriving in our country. They are our brothers and sisters within the CARICOM family. Each CARICOM member state, save and except the Bahamas and Barbados, allow Haitians to enter their country for six months. That is the general understanding of the agreement reached by heads of government in their respective jurisdictions. When the Haitians arrive in our country, Questions have been raised about whether 
the passports are stamped in, that is to say, by the immigration, and whether they are stamped out by the immigration on their departure. That is a standard procedure for anyone entering our country, including we Guyanese. And there should be no difference in respect of any particular nationality or na foreign national entering our country. What has been observed is that when the Haitians arrive, they are shepherded by persons at the airport, not necessarily immigration, to places where they board buses and depart in different directions. We don't know when they leave and how they leave. And this is precisely the question which people are inquiring about. We know that they arrive in the country, but we do not know by what means they depart the country. And this is precisely where the immigration comes in, and particularly the Ministry of Public Security as well as the Ministry of Citizenship. One under Mr. Ramjatan, the other under Mr. Sen Mr. Felix. Now it is quite understandable for Guyanese to ask questions, like any country would do, or like citizens in any country would do. So we can't blame the Guyanese for asking questions at this time, especially when elections are in the air. We have been told that the Haitians leave for Brazil, they leave for uh, French Guyana, and they leave for other destinations. But there's no evidence to that effect. When Mr. Felix tells the nation that police have investigated the issue, and they have come up with nothing to indicate any untoward activity on the part of the Haitians, we question what is the nature of this investigation? Have the police tracked the Haitians to check whether they are checking in at hotels? Have they spoken to minibus drivers or taxi drivers to determine the movements? Now, naturally, let me make this point. Ghana is not a police state. And it is not our business to pay that kind of attention to foreigners when they come to this country. But the fact of the matter is that I come back to the question, because we are in election mode, and questions have been raised, and I would want to say justifiably so, on this matter, it behoves the administration to provide what is called full disclosure of the facts in respect to this matter. That is, if they want to put the matter at ease. If they want to put the minds or the attention of the public at ease. But we all know that this government, one has to extract information as though you're pulling teeth in order to understand an issue or in order to get to the bottom of an issue. Sometimes you have to go to the court in order to extract information from the government. Now, I am saying that the country and Guyanese as a whole, I can't speak for the government. The government appears to be doing their own thing. And questions have also been raised as to whether the government has entered into some kind of secret agreement with Haitians, persons who are making the arrangement for these Haitians to allow them to transit Guyana onto other destinations. Now, nothing is wrong with people transiting Guyana onwards to other destinations, but it must be done in accordance with the immigration laws of our country. I come back to the question that we as Guyanese have absolutely no problem with foreign nationals, including Haitians, visiting our country 
within the meaning of the CARICOM Treaty and within the meaning of the laws of Guyana. But there should be no shadow boxing on this issue. There should be no lack of transparency on the matter. The government must be accountable to the people. And if legitimate questions are being raised by the media, by persons who have distinguished themselves by way of letters to the press, it is for the government to answer those questions and to be forthright. Now, we've had past experiences in Guyana with rigged elections, padding of voters' lists, People who don't exist, their names appear on the list, and suddenly somebody else turns up for them to, to vote for them. They even had dead people voting in previous elections. So the past experiences in respect to elections in Guyana is a quite, I should say, up to 1992. Because from 1992 to 2015, even the elections which put the AP and the AFC in government were deemed free and fair. So there's no question about free and fair elections from 1992 to 2015. We don't know what will happen in this year. And that's another issue which we've spoken about from time to time. But the point I'm making is that prior to 1992, elections in this country have always been questioned. In other words, the experience has been a very odious one. Naturally, we do not want to go back to those days. The Guyanese people want to have free and fair elections. They want to have a clean, credible, and verifiable voters list, and that is one of the issues that is still being debated in the public, notwithstanding the ruling of the Chief Justice. And they want to ensure that even after the elections, there's no violence and there's no problems in the country. And it is in that context that this question about the Haitian presence and the mystery surrounding their stay and their departure that is taking place. It's in that particular context. We've also had experiences in the past, somewhere around the 1970s, where after the war in a country called Kampuchea, which is on the border with uh, Vietnam and Laos, hundreds of these tribesmen, called Hmong tribesmen, were brought to Guyana. They were brought with the intention of staying here. But it so happened that pressure was mounted on the government and the authorities who brought them here and eventually shifted them to the French Guyana. And so it's not to say that Guyanese are creating, so to speak, dragons in the sky and unnecessary fears about padding of lists by anyone or with all kind of names. It is based on past experience. So when we have suddenly thousands of Haitians arriving in the country, questions will be asked. And in order to quell any suspicion, in order to quell any suspicion, the responsibility of the government of the day is to provide full disclosure to the people. That is their responsibility. If they do not do so, then you know there's an old saying, where there's smoke, there's fire. Any government who seeks to withhold information that is sought after by the people is bringing onto themselves more and more suspicions that they're involved in some hanky-panky business on this matter, or they're working hand in glove with others, either in Guyana or outside Guyana, to facilitate the movement of 
Haitian nationals inside and outside Guyana. Now, as I said, this program is not about Haitian bashing. This program is about questioning. This program is about inquiry. This program is about seeking answers to questions which are out there in the public domain. The question many have asked is why are Haitians leaving their country of birth in such large numbers? The situation in Haiti is not a very nice one. Political instability, every day you're hearing government resigning, prime ministers are resigning. Political instability is the order of the day in Haiti. In addition to that, Haiti continues to be, regrettably, this is not something we're proud to talk about, Haiti continues to be, regrettably, one of the poorest countries in this hemisphere. And by the way, let us remember that we were there once. You remember Mr. McIntyre, who was one time the Secretary General of the Caribbean Community, came to Guyana in another capacity to conduct a study just before the 1992 elections. And he, in his report, called the McIntyre Report, declared that Guyana was just as poor as Haiti under the Hoyt administration or the PNC government. So Haiti, unfortunately, for the people, continues to be one of the poorest countries in the hemisphere. 10.4 million people make up the population of Haiti. There are no jobs. Two-thirds of the population, of the working population, are unemployed. 59 out of every thousand, out of every hundred thousand, sorry, 59 out of every hundred thousand. All right, let me repeat that. 59 out of every thousand Haitians die before their first birthday. A most unfortunate situation. Haitians live on US $2 per day. In some cases, $125 per day, US dollars per day. 80% of the population of Haiti live in poverty. And the mortality rate is also extremely high. So when we look at the internal situation in Haiti, it's a very depressing one. And people, like any people in any part of the world, living under conditions like that, especially people who want to live a better life, who want a better life for their parents, for their families, for their children, who are ambitious, who want to work hard to earn a living and to improve their livelihood, will obviously move. This has happened in war-torn countries like Syria and Iraq, and other countries in, the, in, in North Africa, where thousands of people have made their way across the sea, oceans, deserts, to reach Europe. We've also seen where in some countries in Europe, the former Eastern European countries, many have left and gone to France, the United Kingdom, and so forth. So I want to make the point that any people living under depressing and intolerable conditions will seek to move and seek their fortunes in other lands. Now, in today's context, that's not very easy because there's no issues like terrorism. You know, who are these people that are moving? Who are these people that are coming into our country? And by the way, that's one of the reasons why some countries have so insulated themselves 
a country like Hungary in Eastern Europe has made a law that is not allowing any foreign national except a few from Europe to enter their country. In the United States, they've established what is called holding areas for the large numbers of people who are coming from uh, Central America, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. Many walk distances to try to enter the United States. For them, that's like a kingdom. But when they reach the doors of the kingdom that they're seeking to enter, they find it shut. We do not want that to happen for Guyana. And by the way, we saw all those things on television. We saw all those things on television. But you know what? For some of us, it didn't mean anything. Why? Because it wasn't happening here. But now that it is happening in respect to the Haitian population coming to Guyana, people are raising legitimate concerns that they have raised in other countries in the world. So we welcome foreign nationals, especially from the Caribbean, in CARICOM, visiting our country. We do not have, like they have in Barbados, a Guyana bench where they put Guyanese to sit and then they refuse them entry and they put them back on a plane back there. We do not have those things here. We do not have a Haiti bench. And by the way, there are some, what I would describe as the usual suspects who have introduced the race card into this question. Why have they introduced the race card into this question, trying to paint the opposition, especially the People's Progressive Party, civic, as opposed to black people from Haiti coming to Guyana? That is totally erroneous, out of the question. But it seems as though Raising legitimate questions pertaining to the sovereignty, pertaining to the laws of Guyana, pertaining to the constitution of Guyana, that irritates certain people who are stuck in a rut, so to speak. And the only card they know to play in the pack, apart from the joker card, is the race card trying to taint people, asking legitimate questions, not to ask any questions because these are black people coming from Haiti and you're all against them. Total nonsense. And I personally reject that. I want to recall that Guyana stood on the side of Haiti on many occasions. So, my friends, we have to look at this question in its totality. We have to take what I would describe as a holistic approach when we're dealing with this phenomenon. And most importantly, we have to examine this question in the context of the present situation in our country where elections is high on the agenda. And Guyanese who are striving to have a free and fair elections would, quite justifiably so, look at any issue they consider to be. Nobody told them that. Look at any issue that they consider to be detrimental to the holding of free and fair elections in Guyana. And so I come back to the responsibility of the government to allay the fears of the Guyanese people in respect to this matter and to come clean, so to speak, provide the information publicly, provide what is called full disclosure so that there will be no doubts in the minds of legitimate voters when they go to the polls on elections day, whenever that takes place. My friends, Guyana continues to be a very active member in the Commonwealth, in the United Nations, in the OAS, and within CARICOM 
as a whole. The country adheres as best as it can to the treaties, save and accept those which the government is reneging on. So I want to dispel and reject any idea whatsoever that we despise the presence of Haitians in this country. We don't have any walls, by the way. We do not have to be walking around saying Haitians go home. Or we don't have anyone saying anyone go home in our country. So while we welcome people, we have to also ensure that the, their stay in Guyana is one that does not create any trouble whatsoever in respect to elections in particular, do not create any unnecessary worries for the Guyanese people in respect to elections. And therefore, I want to suggest that we continue to follow this matter as carefully and as attentively as we can without, without appearing as though we were opposed to Haitian nationals visiting our country in order to move on to other countries and in order to respect the laws of the country and not to have anything to do with elections, especially engineered by the government of Guyana. The question of trust is very important here. People don't trust the government. And because people don't trust the government, it is from that basis that these suspicions are arising. So let us continue to monitor the situation. Let us continue to be objective, as objective as we can. And let us continue to be as open and as welcoming as we can to all and sundry who prepared to visit our country and to ensure that their stay is a happy and peaceful one. Thank you very much.